Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Aaron Perner, and we're together in Wichita, Kansas. Aaron, how you doing? Doing terrific, Kemp. It's so fantastic to have you in Wichita. I know it. I've never been here. And as we were landing, I saw Dorothy and Toto blowing off, and it's really windy out here. This is their home, right? It is indeed. Absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for having me out here. You've got huge news, all kidding aside. You're rolling out a whole new retail flooring concept called The Floor Project. We'll get into those details in a second, but first, just a little bit of introductions. You know, I really can't call you a retailer, even though you're probably one of the top 20 retailers in the business. You also own a carpet mill. You also sell OEM carpet to the aviation business. So very nice business, right? I love business and it, I'm second generation. I mean, I'm, I'm a product of nepotism. I think if I, as I've told you before, you got to meet my father tonight. So you know exactly what I mean. That's right. I need to add, you're also on the board of the WFCA. And I think your father's been on the board of Carpet One for a long time, right? He has. We're, we're so fortunate. We've got a lot of really smart people that, for whatever reason, come and hang out with us, and they teach us what we need to know. When you talk about all of the different stores that you have under the six or seven brands that you have, how many retail stores do you have? We've closed a few locations. I made some bad decisions on sites. I think we're down to 16 physical locations now. Mm-hmm. We're, we're St. Louis. Omaha, Des Moines, Kansas City, Topeka, and Wichita. Then we've got our, our manufacturing facilities in Spindale, North mm-hmm. Carolina. Right. And so you bought the White Oak brand. you got a great memory. Yeah. It was actually it was a small father-son operation, great manufacturing facility. Got purchased by Taiping, and then they owned it for a lot of years. And then Taiping vacated it. We were the primary customer for the mill, so they sold it to us. Mm-hmm. Just a great company, Taiping. Well, let's go to this floor project. Let's get in some details here. So a lot of people are going to want to know about this. You've opened two pilot stores, one here in Wichita and one in Topeka. You're bringing a whole new retail concept to how you sell flooring to a consumer. One of the first things you did, and I think it's brilliant, you've done some research. You've gone out and you've done some mall intercepts, and you asked a lot of questions, and consumers basically told you five things, right? Yes. What is it very important to the customer? There are five elements that really matter to them. And if you can answer these five questions, they'll be confident in their buying decision. You know, the first question is, how much do I need? How soon can I get it? How much is it going to cost? How's it going to look? And is this right for my life stage? And actually, this whole life stage or lifestyle positioning is a, a big part of what you're doing here. And so this store is very technical-oriented. You have a lot of big screens here. Consumers are able to come in here with either an iPad or a smartphone, and you've got those QR codes on every product. And they can come in and set up a room and then check what each one of these floor coverings look like in their room, right? Yeah, what's really interesting, Kemp, and I think you fell to it quickly when we we started to have our discussion and you saw it, what makes it different, a lot of companies have websites that have their products on them. But what they don't really do is they don't have all the products that are in the store in a way that the customer can see what they're going to look like in a room or in their own room. And what we believe is, look, there's the traditional needs, like we talked about the five key questions. Well, one of the key questions that they have, how's it going to look? Well, they have to see it. I mean, even really talented designers, they're the few customer base that you're going to ever have in a business that can take a palm or a particular pattern repeat and really understand what that's going to look like visually, spatially. Most customers, me included, I can't tell what it's going to look like. And so when the customers that we did our research with said, look, it's important to know what the product's going to look like and whether it's going to be right for me or not. So what we tried to do is we've got a really talented team. Our people and our customers told us what they needed. What we had to do is look through the partnerships that we've got within the industry and outside the industry and bring a solution back that answered that visual need that the customers got so they can know what it's going to look like. And we're the first company in the country that I know of that's gone through the work that every product in the store, you can see what it's going to look like before you kind of try it before you buy it. A couple of things I need to point out is, is there is carpet in here. There is LVT and glass-backed sheet vinyl. There's laminate, and it has hardwood, but no ceramic tile, right? The, the challenge we had with ceramic tile, even though it's a very important segment of the industry right now, and we would love to be in the tile business in the floor project, but the visualization part is a little above what the technology solution is that's out there. We've got some tests that we're doing internally, but we're looking at it. 
But right now, tile is going to be a very difficult solution between the floor and wall combination and the effort that a customer has to have to try it before you buy it, which is an important concept of what the floor project is. So we didn't want to have a product category that did not meet the brand image and the brand equity that we were trying to build with the floor project. Now, one of the things I find very interesting is kind of the way you position the store because it looks like you felt like maybe that the outlet model was probably not the way to go because you've kind of positioned this to be in the middle price point, kind of like a pottery barn or a target. And it looks like the price points you've got in here are kind of in the middle. Is that right? Yeah, what we believe is that the customers want fashion, but they also want value. And so what we found, not not that those other models aren't good models, but the value proposition that you bring to bear with the composition that's in the industry right now, in, in many of the marketplaces, I would argue that in the residential remodel sector of the business, if you take you know the Home Depots, the Lowe's, the Menards, the different big box power centers that are out there, in many cases, they may be up to 40, 45% of the market share. There is a play to go under them and to go after it in the outlet kind of concept. But I think from a strategic position standpoint, we think there's a better, more Main Street consumer that's out there that if the customer experience is really good and you answer the five questions in a unique and profound way for the customer, that they're going to get more value from you and that you're going to be able to grow your business and grow your relationship so you get their friends and family's business. It's almost an oversimplification, but there's only going to be one Walmart and you're not going to play on the low end of the market, right? No, it, it's, I think we talk, you're a student of business and industry and there are three different business types and the one you're describing is an operational excellence play. We're never going to have the scale or scope or cost structure to be the low price delivery guy for a box to the marketplace. We can still offer great value and the customer if you provide services and what we do at at CAP that makes us special and what our primary mission and what built the company when my dad started it and what's going to keep the company going when I'm gone is the ability for us as as an organization to take a unique service that we can provide and add value to the product that we provide for our customers that makes it more valuable than the product itself. All right, a couple things else I want to point out before we run out of time is that as far as installation is concerned, uh, you sell the products here, the price is the price for the product, and you allow customers who want your help in coordinating installation, they can write two checks, one for the product and one for the installation, right? Yeah, what we do is there's a certain overhead structure associated with full service installation, right? And what we try to do is that, you know, we, we have literally the way that we provide value at cost installation is the, the promise that we make. So there's the do it for me piece, and we provide that through professional experts that do the work, or they can do it themselves. Mm-hmm. Two other real quick points to make is that all the brands in here are your private label brands with the exception of Stainmaster. Yes. And the merchandising is very simple. Um, there's no flip racks. You're able to show every skew it faces out toward the customer, and they can open this panel, and behind it are these very large samples that they can check out, right? Yeah, it's really well said, and, and that came from our customers. What the voice of the customer told us was, look, I don't like to have a bunch of stuff on the front of my sample. I want to see what the product's going to look like. I want to be able to have a large piece to see what it's going to look like in my home. I want to be able to take it home with me. In many cases, the the partners that we have, our supplier partners, from a strategic perspective, we've worked together to try to take costs out of the system. If you're going to be a value retailer and you're going to provide value to the market and take costs out, you have to do it in a strategy with your supply chain partner. Mm -hmm. And so we've had some really terrific support from very important value members in the supplier community through this process. So we literally can take a product to market almost instantly. I'll give you an example. One of our suppliers came out with a Versailles pattern in a LVT category, and it was a beautiful product. I mean, it came in after market. They didn't even have their samples yet. I've already got it on the floor, and I got it displayed, and it's all because of the power of the merchandising system that we built. Very quick to market. We can find it here first as a part of the strategy we've got. All right. Now, let's, let me just emphasize one thing I said at the beginning. These are two pilot stores. Your plan is to get this whole project well-tuned and then roll it out. Now, as you roll it out, is this going to be all your operations, or is there a franchise uh, opportunity here, or what's the plan? 
You are so good, man. I, I'm not going to answer it. And I know you asked me before, but thank you for asking again. Yeah. I, I think the first most important thing is the customers have to win, and we have to have a successful business model. I think the rest of it we can figure out. But we didn't build this to make two stores. I assure you of this. Aaron, was great to see you. I really appreciate you spending time with us. What a great concept. Probably one of the most innovative platforms where a retailer interacts with a consumer that I've seen since I've been in the business. So, again, we've been talking to Aaron Perner, who's the owner of Cap Carpets and this new floor project. And you've been listening to Kempar and FloorDaily.net.